my apologies, we've gone over time uh, and we have one more speaker. Uh, this is, you know, when I said I could listen to Gordon all day, actually that, that was great and I, I let him go because I wanted to hear him. Uh, probably to my detriment because our next speaker is uh, Dr. Penny Bellum and she's the city manager for the city of Vancouver and she's basically my boss. So we've cut into her time. Uh, thank you for your uh, talk, Penny, and we'll break. No, uh, so if you could uh, come up. Penny's going to talk about walking places, healthy places, Vancouver, the sustainable city. Thank you. Thanks very much, Neil. Whoa. And uh, welcome to everyone here today who I didn't see last night. This is a real honor and a privilege both to host this conference here in this region, uh, our, our wonderful region, and also for me as the city manager just to have a chance to share a few of my thoughts. And Gordon, I knew you would take all my time. <laughs> but you know, um, I would just say that that's totally legitimate. Uh, you know, the, the political leadership and the, 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 the leadership in our public service in this city and the region uh, is really why you've heard the story that you've heard this morning. And it's a story that we're very, very proud of. And it's, it's a story that I haven't been part of, but I come from another sector. And in the last three years as the city manager of Vancouver, I've learned an enormous amount about cities, city building, smart city building, and all of the very critical milestone decisions that were made, particularly in the city of Vancouver over the last many decades that have resulted in this being one of the most livable cities in the world. And so I'm gonna just take you to a totally different place here because I'm a physician. I'm trained in a discipline that Probably you would never want to see me as a physician. I'm a, I'm a blood doctor, a hematologist, and really that's about as far as you can get from a walkable city as you would like. But I, I had the privilege of serving for five years in the Ministry of Health in this province as the Deputy Minister. And that was where I really learned the importance of connecting all the dots of various sectors, various research sectors, and really the, the connection of all those to the public interest. And in the conversations I've had in the last 24 hours with many of you who are visiting from all over the world to come to this conference, we've talked a little bit about health and how important the health agenda is to the, the walking agenda and the walkable cities agenda. And I just, I just want to show you today or just talk to you a little bit about you know, what that means and, and how I've come to this walkable city agenda through a completely different window than, than most of you who I think, I know we have some health people here and some public health people, but I think the majority of you are planners, uh, transportation engineers, um, perhaps architects and, and recreation, recreation uh, planners. And when I, when I look at what we're all about, which is the public interest in the, in the long term, What's really important for me is steepening the curve. How do we make progress as quickly as possible to some of these end goals that we're now learning and understanding are very, very important to our public interest. And healthy communities and making our cities where more than 50% of the population of the world live, and I, I understand by 2030, 60% of our world's population will live in urban centers. And so we, we need to get on with this and, and learn not only what's the right thing to do, but more importantly, how do you get there? And for all of us who've worked in government especially and, and in the public sector, we know that you may know the right thing to do for a long time, but getting there is the real trick and how is it we steepen the curve. And so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of a, a story of how as a Deputy Minister of Health, we actually had to learn how to get a, a government to actually make some of the decisions that actually feed into our Walk 21 agenda and a walkable city and a, and a healthy community agenda. Because basically having your community healthy is all about economic development, it's about public safety, social development, social connectedness, as well as health. And how we actually build our cities, and we've learned from the likes of Larry Frank and other experts, that actually form does follow function, but form is also a very important to make cities function for the public to live and work in them. 
And when, when you look at what ways to actually help move this agenda, the health agenda is absolutely critical because as you'll see, it consumes a huge proportion of the resources in our developed societies. And it is an agenda that has the attention of governments all over the world. And as a, as a deputy minister, what I learned is that it wasn't just a, the minister or the ministers of health that were important for me to, to, work, to work with, but the first ministers in our countries, whether they're premiers or governors and presidents of our countries and, and first premiers, they, they all think about health a lot of the time because it's a big consumer of, of what we need to do. So let me just show you maybe a couple of things that brought me to really understanding how we need to move forward and what we're gonna to do to, to move this agenda. And this is a, this is a health slide. These are, this is all British Columbia data in the last five to 10 years. And what you see here is that in terms of the burden of illness and chronic illness is overwhelmingly now in the developed world, the burden of illness that, that we have to deal with. It's illnesses like diabetes, heart disease, respiratory disease, arthritis, that actually impact people over many, many years. It's no longer the, the quick sort of intermittent illness or, or injury that people have that is the major focus of our healthcare systems. It's actually chronic disease. And you can see that obesity and physical inactivity and, and tobacco and alcohol drive the vast majority of the spending and the care that we have to provide in chronic disease. And what, what you know and what you talk about and I'm just going to encourage you to, to link yourself into an understanding and to some extent into the lexicon of health um, as you talk about walkable cities and walking and, and the various benefits that it brings to our public. It's important to have a few of these facts because it will help us uh, on our road forward. And this is the kind of data that gets government's attention. So in, in British Columbia, this was data from 2005, physical inactivity cost the healthcare system about $570 million a year. That's just in British Columbia. So our health budget now in this province is about 13, 14 billion dollars. Overweight and obesity directly linked both to healthy nutrition and overnutrition, as well as physical activity and inactivity and chronic illness. You can see the, the cost of that a year in British Columbia. And then tobacco use. And although tobacco use is a bit separate, what we all know, how many people in this room still smoke? Hands up. Come on, confess up. <laughs> Not a single smoker. Unbelievable. That's great. Good round of applause. But for all of you who may have given up tobacco, and I know there's at least a few people here that gave it up, you know how important exercise and walking and being outside and, and distracting yourself with those endorphins that come out of, out of walking and, and being active, how important that was in, in quitting one of the most difficult addictions there is, one that was designed to be difficult to quit. And this is a wave that we talked about, and the mayor talked about children and, and kids and, and their health, and that's really important to us. And our statistics across this country and many countries in the Western world are, are terrific. Our, our kids are obsessed with their, their iPads, their laptops, their whatever, all those little machines that they're using their thumbs for, but lots of the rest of their body parts aren't getting much of a workout as they spend many, many hours at the, at the computer and at the TV console. But the seniors in our, not, not just our, our developed world, but in our developing world are, is, is very much an issue that we need to think about. And this is the curve for BC out to 2016. And the, the different colors reflect, you know, the dark blue at the top is people over 90, the, the purple is 85 to 89, and so on down, down the thing. So learning how to actually make our, our living environments, and in this case, our urban environments, amenable to keeping seniors healthy and active and autonomous and independent and socially connected. We've learned the hard way in healthcare that if you don't pay attention to those things, then you're, you're dealing with the most expensive part of the agenda. And that's going to affect all of our agendas. And for Ian, Ian Jarvis today, um, who is our CEO from TransLink, who's just signed on to the charter, I can tell you that if, if he doesn't start to help get on the health bandwagon and, and help our governments understand that he's contributing to health by connecting transit, making the air cleaner, helping people walk to transit, 
that's a really important thing because as I'll show you, the big health hoover is going to suck it all up if we don't help them move along into a much more preventive mode. And this is a curve that just shows you, this is just hospital workload and hospital dollars. So hospital are the, hospitals are the, the most acute and, and most expensive end of our healthcare system. And this is where I've spent most of my career, working in hospitals and, you know, figuring out how you can keep hospitals alive and doing some of the marvelous and wonderful things they do, but not end up being the, the face, the only face of a healthcare system that actually keeps our public healthy. But you can see as it relates to seniors, about halfway through this slide, I don't know whether this is a... Yeah, so this is the 40s, and up here is people over 85, and this is the curve of use of hospitals. So you can see, that's a big hunk of uh, a whole state's or province's budget um, going into hospital care, which is a little bit of the horse is already out of the barn. And here's just one example. I've taken one chronic disease that, that many of you know about because the most important thing is that if everybody walked, we probably would have half the incidence of diabetes. Because diabetes today in our modern world is a disease of seniors, it's a disease of obesity. It's not the brittle type one diabetes that some of us grew up with, with friends and kids in school. That's a completely different disorder. But the, the vast majority of people with diabetes nowadays have what we call type two diabetes, which is a disease of insulin resistance where people are too big and they have too much resistance to that hormone and they end up with diabetes and all of the vast really very, very threatening complications you get. And what you see is this is a curve of diabetes um, in British Columbia over out to 2016. And this slide was made by the provincial health officer um, in 2005. And that curve is the same worldwide and in the developing world and in the modern world. And what you know about diabetes is that if everybody in diabetes got on a walking program and they could, they could walk to work and they could walk to buy their food, and they did that every day, so they, they didn't load up their car with a month's worth of food that's not very healthy, that lasts a month. And if they walk to the bus, and walk to transit, and walk to their library, and walk to their community center, and walk to their recreational facilities, that this curve would, would not look like what it does today. So motordom, to a certain extent, is behind that curve. And here is just, this is, this is just something that's really deep into healthcare now, but I just had to take you there because Gordon <laughs> took you deep into motordom. But, but this is a bit of a clangor slide because all of you know people who've had some of these complications. And if you look at diabetes patients, taking up the percentage of different procedures and surgeries that cost a huge amount of resources in our, in our countries, 20% of cataract surgery, 25% of angioplasty. So that's when they put the little catheter in and blow up the balloon for people having a heart attack. A third of coronary bypass surgery, that's open heart surgery where people have their, you know, the veins taken out of their leg and they're put in their heart because they have angina and coronary artery disease, the most common form of heart disease. Half of dialysis is linked to type two diabetes. Over half of any limb amputations and retinal surgery, 60%. So from our perspective in the healthcare se sector, to have a condition that's rising as fast as it is with these kinds of complications taking up this proportion, you know that creating urban environments that are walkable, livable, where people get outside and they exercise, and at the same time they socially connect and get mutual support for healthy living, it's huge and the connections are, are, are vital. And this slide just shows you that from a health perspective, it makes a big difference. And what this is, this is, this is women and coronary events in Canada. So these are women having heart attacks, basically. And with no intervention, this is the curve as it goes. But just the intervention of diet, quitting smoking and exercising, you can bring that curve right down to there. And then you start getting into alcohol and just reducing your body mass. So even if you don't lose weight, just being fit and, and walking and increasing your exercise um, can make this kind of a difference. And this is the clanger slide that I want you to remember. As you go out and, and you want to find, first of all, governments to help understand why we need to make the kinds of decisions that we're, you're going to talk about, all of you planners and transportation engineers, 
why we want to nuance and why we may want to not just keep building freeways and highways that are, that are going to be counterintuitive to many of this. The, the, this slide is really the way that we in the Department of Health in this province actually got our government in the last 10 years to actually go upstream and invest a significant amount in prevention and in, in walking and exercise programs and in thinking across the whole of government of how we were going to make our public more healthy. And we involved the transportation departments, the local, the, the ministries of the economy and small business, tourism. Uh, we, we had programs like Rails to Trails where, where we actually convinced the government to invest in converting rail, old rail lines into actually walking and cycling um, trails all over the province. And we went through every single, whether it was corrections, the, the Justice Department, every single branch of government and said, what can you do to keep our public healthy? And walking is one of the most fundamental pieces that you could do to keep our public healthy. And in some, in some different departments who had no knowledge of what they could possibly do, mines and resources, or the Attorney General when we first started with them, and we said, well, at a minimum, get your staff to walk up and down the stairs and walk to work. Just those just fundamental things that they never even thought of. They're like, oh, well, we can do that. And once they got into that, they started to realize all of the different things they could do. So this was the slide <clears throat> that got their attention. And it's a slide that's very legitimate. Right now, we're, we're here. And this was back here. 40% of the province's whole budget went to health care. And it was estimated that by now it would be up at about 53. And we're not, we're not there yet. We're probably at about 45. But the curve was, was inevitable, and with a tax base that wasn't rising at any of that rate, what you saw was education, transportation, all the other departments were going to get hoovered out of existence. It's a very dramatic story, but it has a lot of resonance. And so my, my plea to all of you um, this morning is, first of all, Remember that what you're doing with Walk 21 and this whole agenda is critically important, not just to livable cities. If you take it through to the people that live in them and their health and, and the air they breathe, it makes a big, big difference. Secondly, in the health research community, as you will see throughout this conference, there are people that, that have an interest in this, and, but they do very, there's very little cross-connection still with our urban planners, our transportation engineers. It's one of, the thing that we're, one of the things that we're really trying to increase and enhance in our work in the city of Vancouver, and I know Surrey and Richmond and other member municipalities of our metropolitan region are working on the same. And we really welcome our academic partners who are helping teach us how to think a bit differently, how to just twist the nuance and get, as I tell my staff, a double word score. You know, go beyond the transportation engineer's paradigm and bring in a health paradigm and bring in the planner's paradigm and, you know, bring in some of the social determinants of health and actually in, in one decision, one transportation plan, as it turns out, you've actually had impacts across a number of, of different very key issues that are critically important to our general well-being. So I want to wish all of you a really fantastic conference today. This is, I think, is one of the the larger conferences we have. We have people from all over the world. We're very proud of our city. We want you to enjoy it. We look forward to all of your ideas because we have a lot of staff from across our city who are, who are going to be attending parts of this conference. And I think it's a tremendous opportunity for all of us to get together, learn from each other, and, and move the agenda on for our public who we're here to serve. So thank you so much. I only want to say one other thing, and that is to um, just uh, have Sandy James stand up here. And I just want to thank her for her tremendous leadership on organizing this conference on, on behalf and being the lead on behalf of the city of Vancouver. It's like organizing a big conference, an international conference like this, a little bit like writing a book. It's an incredible achievement. And I, I just want to thank you, Sandy, and congratulate you and just say you, you make us very proud. So thank you so much, and to all of you who helped. If I may, you see the tremendous city manager I've had the honor to work with.
So thank you very much. Thank you, Penny. You've actually brought us back on time. <laughs> um, we're going to break for coffee. It's 30 minutes, so uh, coffee, go out the doors, down. Uh, volunteers will direct you. It's in the atrium. Uh, it's a nice, beautiful, beautiful space. Uh, please network and be back here at uh, 10.30. So thank you very much. And another round of applause for our speakers.